Jesus. Bless the number for the good one under every zone worse. I am God the Lord who took you out of the land of Egypt from the house of slaves when a person experiences everything. But it happens to him as being for his greatest good. He has attained the essential experience of the world to come. And the last verse says, And God, you gave up, okay, I praise his word. And the Lord and the King, I praise his word. His perception is the quen is the quintessential experience of the world to come. As the sages ask on the verse, I will run that day, God will rob it, will be one, etc. Is he, he not one today? And the answer today, we recite the blessing, who is good and the for pleasant experiences, and who is the true judge for painful experiences. In the future, though, who is good and does good will be recited for everything, and hence, the name of the case of K. And the name of every king will be one, but this perception is impossible to experience. The level that's the council of Malchus, kingship of holiness, is elevated from exile, Nanach Nachmu, Nachmam Yuman, from among the nations, who presently kingship and rule belong to the nations, which is why their gods are called Elohim, for they draw sustenance from the concept of Malchus, which is referred to as Elohim, as the verse says, Elohim is my king from ancient times, but when the concept of Malchus this is elevated from among the nations. This actualizes the verse for the king of all the earth is Elohim. But it is impossible to return the kingship to God without verbal confession. Before I taught scholar, thereby one rectifies the concept of Malchus and, of, and elevates it to its source. Thereby one rectifies the concept of Malchus and elevates it to its source. This is the meaning of take words with you, which refers to the wording, words of confession, which are an aspect of Malchus as we find. One double leader, the Havor for a generation, leader for a generation, one leader, one double leader. Now that's Nahmo, Nahmo, Megumon, and we turn to God, means rectifying and elevating the words. Can you worship the aspect of the king? Can you give up? That is as said before. In God, you give up. I praise his word. In the Lord, Elohim, I praise his word, meaning that one should know. And all one's experiences are all for one's greatest good, and that one should express gratitude for all of them with the blessing who is good and does good. Uh, na -na, who is good and does good. And when a person knows experiences are all this. This is called perfect knowledge, for the essence of knowledge is knowing the oneness of kindness and stringency. For the essence of knowledge is knowing the oneness of kindness and stringency. The oneness of kindness and stringency. This is true knowledge, not to differentiate between kindness and judgment, and to recite the blessing. Who is good and does good on everything? This is the meaning of God is one. God is one, and, and His name is one. As the verse said, that in the future there will be complete oneness, that God will be perceived as who is good. And does good. This is alluded to in the verse, Yitke Vav K is one, and his name, which is an aspect of Elikim Malchus. As the verse says, King David made for himself a name, is one one echod, being numer numerically equivalent to a have a love, implying that both Yitke Vav K, which is mercy, love, and his name, which is an aspect of Elikim, an aspect of judgment, are all for your greater good, greatest good, out of God's love for you. As the verse says, God chastises those who those he loves, and only you have I known, and you only you have I known from all the families on earth. And only you have I known from all the families on earth. Therefore I will exact upon you an account of your sins. Now a person's sins are on his bones. As the verse says, their singing is were engraved on their bones. Each sin, their sins were engraved on their bones. Each sin has its unique combination of letters. 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 And when one transgresses a certain sin, that specific negative combination is engraved on one's bones. By so doing, one has taken the concept of the verbal expression, uh, the verbal express expression of the realm of the impurity, uh, the verbal expression of the verbal expression of that specific negative commandments that one has transgressed and brought it into the realm of impurity. That is one has exiled the aspect of kingship, the aspect of one leader, Dabur, Dabur, for a generation. 
sin among the nations and given them dominion. For instance, if one has transgressed the, neg the negative commandment of not having other gods, then one has corrupted the positive aspect of his saying, of this saying expressed in the combination of its letters, and recombined them in a negative way, which is then engraved on one's bones, and this then avenges itself on the person as the verse says, your sins have caused this, and the wickedness of the wicked will kill him, but through verbal confession the letters engraved on one's bones are extracted and, are, and transformed into the letters that make up the words of the confession for speech emerges from the bones as in all my bones will say and one thus destroys the structure of the negative combination of the headers and built within the mouths of holiness this is alluded to in the words of our sages when the Israelites went through the wilderness Judah's bones were all mixed up until Moses said, Listen, O oh God, to the voice of Judah, Moses thought that God should remember Judah's verbal confession, which indeed happened. This explains why Judah's bones were mixed up, since the verse says their sins were engraved on their bones, which was rectified by way of the verbal confession, and each bone was set in its right place. Now Judah represents kingship, alluding that the aspect of Malchus was rectified by his verbal confession, which was accomplished by Moses, who pointed out that pointed out the confession for us that the confession must meet be made before a Torah scholar and even and every Torah scholar is an aspect of Moses as the sages said to one another Moses you have spoken well have you spoken well hence by Moses evoking by Moses is evoking this conf the confession Moses have you spoken well have you ever went Oh, by Moses is evoking the confession. It was as if Judah had made the confession before him. There you in and there, which rectified the aspect of kinship and destroyed the negative combination of letters that had been engraved on his bones. This is an aspect of returning the Malchus to its source, since the source of Malchus is fire. As the sages said, how did Nebot, how did Nebot, the father of King Jer Jer Jeroboam, Hey, yeah, 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 to think that he would become king. He saw, he saw a fire emerging from his genital, genitals, and it all uh, is also called fire, as in indeed my word is like fire, and kings will rank through the me, the Torah, specifically the yes, the Torah, is the Torah, scholars, as the sages say, how foolish are those who stand in honor of a Torah scroll, but do not stand in honor of a Torah student, the above is alluded to in the verse, and he dove a whore, a thing that is used over fire must be brought into fire, and he dove a thing that is used over fire must be brought into fire, but dove I said, alludes to Malchus, and the verse would thus be saying that if the Malchus was drawn into impurity through the heat, drawn into impurity through the heat of passion, as we find passion referred to as a fire in the house of Amram, then, it, then its rectification is that it be brought into fire, which is a reference to confession before a Torah scholar. This is why the Hebrew word for sin is a veil, which may mean passing through for the combination of the letters of any sin passes through one's bones from extremity to extremity. Hey, me, it's the commandment on the other hand is from the root of binding together, specifically when one does bundles of commandments, then one's broken bones are bound together, as in he guards all his bones. This is the meaning of the king's rage is emissaries of death, for God's rage is over the humiliation, humiliation of the Malchus. Bevel that a person causes by his sins, and the verse continues, but a wise man will atone for it. This refers to the Torah scholar as an aspect of Moses, who will atone for the person at the verse. Says, God of a much transgression for the remnant, on which the sages comment, for one who makes himself like a remnant, hence when one comes to a Torah scholar and confesses before him all the letter combinations he created by his sins, the Torah scholar who is an aspect of Moses, who makes himself like a remnant, as in the man who Moses was extremely humble, which is why he is called a wise man, as in wisdom arises from nothing, this, this empowers the Torah scholar to attain the atonement, to set a wise man will atone for it. For the yeast reason when Moses prayed regarding the golden calf, he said, either bear their sin, and if not, then erase me. For it is impossible that someone form of, 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 of. For it is impossible that some form of pride should not arise. In a present way, you years and all your others praising him. Who will you use others praising him? 
and I will bubble bubble the more bubble bubble so we make great king phrases have ever lots of oh it is absolutely impossible ever that you should not have some prideful thoughts only in a state of a complete cessation of all one's feelings and individual identity is it possible for a person to hear his praise oh you ever then not have any proper rightful thoughts this is true of Moses who saw written in the Torah God spoke to Moses the Jewish people read about his greatness every day in the Torah and he himself tells them about his own greatness yet he had absolutely no feelings that he had absolutely Oh yeah, baby, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, baby, have had absolutely no, no feelings of pride Yet he had absolutely no feelings of prideness As the verse says, the man Moses was extremely humble It was certainly by way of his humility that he had the power To atone for the sin of the golden calf of breath As the verse says, a wise man will atone for it So this was what Moses argued if now was as if you God do not bear their sin You thus show that I lack sufficient humility To atone for the sin of the golden For the sin, for the sin of the golden calf Therefore I request Oh, you rebel, rebel, waste me Therefore I request a rebel, rebel, waste me So that I will not fall into fraud By constantly singing And hearing my name and my praise in the title For who can endure hearing his praise And not feel ill Bravo, 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 rightful For who can endure Door, hearing his praise and I feel you, 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 you. And not be ill, prideful besides an extremely humble person. Thus, if I am humble, you must bear the sin. As the verse says, God overlooks in transgression for the remnant. This is alluded to in the verse. Moses became king in Yeshurun, meaning that the Malchus rose to its source, as in the humble. Meaning that the Malchus rose to its source, as in the humble will inherit the earth. Oh, meaning that the Malchus rose to its source, as in the humble will inherit the earth. Oh, and the earth began again next Oh, meaning that the Malchus rose to its source, as in the humble will inherit the earth, and the earth being the executory as the humble will inherit the earth, and the earth being, this is alluded to in the verse, Moses became king of Shudan, meaning that the Malchus rose to its source, as in the humble will inherit the earth, and the earth being the executory aspect of the Malchus, as the verse says, the earth would rise up against them. This is the meaning of our sages, our sages is parable, a person was walking along in the middle of the night, and darkness, yes, a middle Along in the middle of the night and darkness, afraid of thorns and pits, from wild beasts and robbers, from wild beasts and robbers, not knowing which way to go, for it is known that all of the negative character traits and their offshoots are derived from the four basic elements, from the four basic vials, as mentioned in the Mishnah's Chassidim, depression and its offshoots are derived from the inanimate, lust and, ex and its offshoots are derived from the vegetative, idle chatter and its offshoots are derived from the animalistic pride and its offshoots are derived from the human power of speech. Like thus, one who seeks to follow the path of holiness must, must, must break all the negative character traits and confess them before a Torah scholar. The Torah scholar would then explain and clarify to him a fitting path, the Torah scholar would then explain and clarify to him a fitting path appropriate for the source of his soul. But there are three levels of attachment to the tzaddikin, all three of which are required in order to achieve a complete rectification. First of the three levels is beholding the tzaddik, as the verse says, your eyes will behold your master. But this level encounters the nehet, that counters the negative traits of rahis and yiying from the two elements of an animate and vegetative. This, that is depression and its offshoots and lust. This is because the tzaddik of the generation is called a mother. For he suckles the Jewish people with the light of his Torah and the Torah is called milk. As the verse says, honey and milk are under your tongue. This is why we see that a depressed, a depressed or, lack, or a lackadaisical little child, a depressed or lackadaisical little child will become very enthused. When it sees its mother, when it sees its mother running to greet her, that is returning to its source. We also see that even when a child is playing with its toys, though it derives great pleasure from this, it will nevertheless 
cast this on the side when it sees its mother and be drawn to her. Hence, we see that the negative character traits of the two elements of the inanimates and the vegetative vanish when one beholds its body. There, you know, this is the meaning of afraid of thorns, which are symbol symbolic of the vegetative, and from pits, which are symbolic of the inanimates. But when a person comes across the Oyanavuka torch of light, an illusion to a Torah scholar who is an Ovik channel of uh, light, bound, stuck to you, who is an Ovik channel of light, one is saved from the negative character traits arising from these two elements of the inanimate and the vegetative and one is spared from the thorns and the pits the second level is giving charity to a Torah scholar through this one is saved from the negative traits that arise from the two elements of animal and human oh yeah which are wild beasts and robbers which are idle chatter and pride and their offshoots for through idle chatter and gossip comes poverty as in for all those people who inform gossip to power about you have died which means which means that they became impoverished. Our sages also said regarding pride, a sign of pride is poverty. On the other hand, by giving charity, one becomes wealthy, as our sages said. If your sustenance is tight, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and certainly if it is abundance, give charity. And if you are supported by charity yourself and give charity, then you will no longer have to endure poverty. This is the meaning of the conclusion of the sages' teaching. Uh, the sages' teaching, once the dawn has broken, one is spared from wild beasts and robbers. The break of dawn is an illusion to charity. As the verse says, when you see a naked person, give him clothes, then your light will shine forth like the dawn. Hence, through charity, one is spared from the negative, tra negative traits of the two elements of animal and human, which are represented by wild beasts and robbers. The third level is confession before a Torah scholar. By doing so, the Torah scholar guides a person along a fitting path and according to the source of his soul. This is the meaning of one who, once one reaches the fork in the road, which the sages say refers to the Torah scholar and the day of death, an aspect of, confess, of confessing before the Torah scholar for the day of death is a reference to confession. As the sages say, all those put to death must, must, must confess. All those put to, put to death must confess. This is referred to as a fork in the road. Road, seven and the Torah scholar shows a person the road appropriate for the source of his soul. At this point, a person is safe from everything but before confession, even though one has already come before the Torah scholar and given him charity. One still does not know which path to follow. As the verse says, there is a path that looks upright to a person, but is ultimately a path of death. However, once one arrives at the fork in the road, which is the Torah scholar and the day of death, that is the confession before the Torah a scholar, then one is saved from all harm. This takes place every time one comes to a Torah scholar and tells him everything that is on one's heart. Since a Torah scholar is an aspect of Moses, who is an aspect of Ayin, as the verse says, wisdom arises from Ayin, arises from Ayin, nothingness. By way of this, one becomes dissolved into the ink, so the infinite, an aspect of being thrown to the place from whence one came, meaning that the Malchus will return to the ink, so which is the will of all wills, for the Malchus is an aspect of spoken letters, and each and every letter and body is the will of God, it is the will of God that the, this letter look like this, and that letter look like that, hence the different wills, and as expressed by the different forms of the letters are a manifestation of God's Malchus, all of these wills, that is, the forms of the letters are drawn from the will of the infinite, which has no form at all. Level by level, all the yees, all, all things and entities in this world arise from the letters. That is, from the Malchus, for all existence is an expression of Malchus, that God will, that his kingship be manifested in the world. That God will, that his kingship be manifested in the world, by way of which he created the world into existence out of nothingness. Now, all of the wills, that is, the different forms of the letters and all existing entities which are an aspect of the Malchus are sustained by the will of the infinite and as the sages say wherever you find God's greatness referring to his kingship that is his will there you find his humility that is the will of the infinite this is an aspect of divesting oneself of materiality for when one wants to dissolve into the infinite
For when one wants to, for when one wants to dissolve into the infinite, for when one wants to dissolve into the infinite, one must surrender one sense of separate existence. For when one wants to dissolve into the infinite, one must surrender one sense of separate existence. For when one wants to dissolve into the infinite, one must surrender one sense of separate existence. This is alluded to in the desire. This is alluded to in the desire. This is alluded to in the desire. Where it is stated that Moses is, that Moses is passing to a place on Shabbos afternoon, when the will of all wills and aspect of the will of the infinite is revealed, since all wills are sustained by the will. And Moses is surrendered his very being, as the verse says, We are nothing. There he is, then is the meaning of he buried them in the valley, an aspect of the iron of nothingness, as in every valley will be uplifted. In the land of, of Moya, of an aspect of Malchus, an aspect of the vine of nothingness is in every valley would be uplifted. In the land of Moya, of an aspect of Malchus, hence King David descended from Moya. Oh, it says, King David descended from Moab. The city that Moses passed away into the Ainsof, the infinite, into the will of all wills, which is an aspect of the will of the infinite that is embodied in all wills. In the forms of the letters, in the aspect of Malchus, as the sages say, wherever you find his greatness, that is his Malchus. The aspect of wills, there you find his will, the will of boy, the will of the infinite. And this is the meaning of opposite base point, about which the sages say, why is it called Peor? Because it Peor opens its mouth wide. For when one damages the Malchus, one becomes empowered. So one will open one's mouth wide with bad letter combinations. But since Moses rectified the Malchus, Peor had no power to open its mouth. This is why no one knows Moses' burial sites, meaning that even Moses himself did not know, as the sages say, since he had completely become dissolved into the infinite, and this was after his death, but even while he was alive, he certainly also attained a state of divesting himself of his materiality and was able to bind himself to the light of the infinite. However, this divesting was only to the extent of the angels were running and returning for God desires our our earthly our earth, earthly our our earthly service. As it is said, you despot you desire praise from lumps of earth, from those forms from clay. Therefore one cannot remain in such a state till God himself comes to take away one's soul. This is why we see that a person sometimes becomes very aroused during prayer and while and will recite several words with great enthusiasm. This is God's compassion on him and opening of the light of the infinite to enlighten him. When a person sees this opening, and though the person does not consciously see it, his soul sees it, his soul immediately becomes a rabble bows with great longing to bind itself to the light of the infinite, the degree to which the infinite was revealed. As expressed with the number of words that were open, opened and caused to shine, and caused to shine will cause the person to recite those, wor those words with great longing, self-surrender, and utter quieting of one's bodily sensations. And when one is dissolved into the infinite, to the if infinite, yeah, 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 one is in the category of no one knows that even the person himself is unaware of his existence. But this can only be done as running and returning so that one maintains one's individual existence. Thus, when one is returning, one, one must relay this experience to one's consciousness for during the experience, for during the experience of oneness with the infinite, one individual, one's individual consciousness, one's individual consciousness is suspended. As in, no one knows, but when one, one, one returns from this, from the experience, one returns to one's personal existence, to one's consciousness, and when one then returns to one's consciousness, one then knows of the oneness of the infinite and his kindness, then one is aware that there is no difference between Yitke, Vavke, and Delokim, between the attribute of judgment and that of kindness, for it is impossible that there be a change of will in the infinite, for changes are only in the different forms of the letters, but when a person becomes dissolved into the infinite, where there are no changes of will, for the will of the infinite is ultimately simple, an impression of this experience remains. So that when one returns from the experience, this, this impression is relayed to one's consciousness so that it comes to know that everything is good and everything is one. This is what Moses told the, his, his generation. He was shown to know that he gave up his Elohim. For Moses was an aspect of the iron nothingness infinite and his generation should know 
that is, make it known to the consciousness, the aspect of the ain't soul, the, con the concept of the will of wills, the concept of Yuke Vavke, is Eloike, ay, 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 this, that is the meaning of what Java Baba Khama said. I was once traveling in a spin or a ship when I saw this fish, and a small in insect was sitting in its nostril, the fig is died was expelled by the water and cast on the Guda Kof. Destroying 60 cities, the residents of another 60 cities are eight part of it. Those of yet another 60, 60 cities, those of yet another 60 cities salted part of it away and 300 barrels of oil were extracted from one of its eyeballs. When we returned after 12 months, we saw that beams were being sawn from its bones to rebuild those destroyed cities. After 12 months, we saw that beams were being sawed from its bones to rebuild those destroyed cities. Spina denotes something of importance, an aspect of Malchus. Baba Baba Khamu was thus traveling in Espino, who delving with his mind regarding the Malchus specifically, how the Jewish people are, are able to elevate it. He saw this fish, an allusion to the Jewish people, who are called fish, as the verse says, they will multiply in the land like fish. A small insect was sitting in its heart, and nostril alludes to Jewish prayers. Oh yes, and it is my praise to Echtom, dry up my breath for you, and to which an aspect Oh, it is my prayer to have come draw out my draw out my prayer and my breath for you and to which an aspect an insect had entered that is when an impurity enters one's prayer or divine service and confounds a person there yeah 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 oh a Jewish person is, is unable to serve God properly what does one do one must take the above three steps attach oneself to a tzaddik giving charity and verbal confession and this is alluded to in the fish is dying it, it's being expelled from the water and it's being cast on the coast listing the three concepts in inverted order it's dying refers to verbal confession as in all those put to death must first confess it being expelled is an aspect of giving charity it's being expelled is an aspect of giving charity as the verse said uh, as, as, uh, as the verse says, cast your bread upon the face of the water, and fortunate are you who plants on all types of water, and it's being cast on the Guda coast, refers to the Tzaddik, was called a Guda from the same root word as Gehader, a fence border for the Tzaddik, fences in the breaches, for the Tzaddik fences in the breaches of the Jewish people, thus being cast to the Guda means surrendering oneself to the Tzaddik, by way of these three steps, 60 cities were destroyed for by dying, that is by verbal confession, one raises the Malchus from the realm of evil, the Tzaddik, that shows a person, that shows a person the proper path, as the prophetic reading on Shabbos Genesis says, I will destroy mountains and hills, an allusion to the destruction, an allusion to the, to the, to the destruction of non-Jewish dominion, I will lead the blind along a path they did not know, which refers to the Tzaddik, showing the proper path corresponding to the fork in the road. Sixty cities refers to elevating the Malchus, about which the verse says, there are sixty Malchus, there are sixty Malachos, the sixty cities eating from it are thus an illusion to the two negative traits of the animalistic and the human world. Oh, which caused poverty as stated above, but by giving charity, one can evoke 
abundance to eat from it, which the city, the 60 cities are an illusion. 60 cities are an illusion to the 60 mighty ones, by way of whom comes sustenance. As it says, the mighty of rain, it's being salted by 60 cities, is an illusion to the rectification of the two negative traits of the inanimate and the vegetative world. By coming to the tzaddik, for the tzaddik is... The eternal covenant of salt. Furthermore, depression and lust arise from murky blood, and salt causes the bad blood to be drawn out. The sixty cities are an allusion to the sixty letters in the priestly blessing that is in the hand of the tzaddik. As the verse says, blessings on the head of the tzaddik. It's filling three hundred barrels of oil with one of its eyeballs. Alludes to conscious awareness and three may a hundred. Oi alludes to Moses, who represents the Tzaddik, holding himself to the level of Mo. Oi of Mo, nothing is, for there are three areas in which one must humble himself. Oi humble oneself, as the verse says, let not the wise, the mighty, the wealthy boast. Hence in each of the of the three aspects, Moses becomes Ma, by way of which he divests himself of materiality and dissolves into the infinite, where there is no change of will, rather Yikivalke is Elikim, meaning that everything is for the very best. This is alluded to in one of the eyeballs, as mentioned in the Zoya. In the future, there will be only one eye of compassion, which is an aspect of everything being for the highest good. Hence, when a tzaddik, Yuman makes himself into the nothingness of Ma, he is binding himself with the one eye of compassion, that is, with the infinite. But when he, re- but, but when he then returns from that state, as in running and returning, he then from, he then from the light of the infinite draws down the oneness of the simple will by way of his nothingness which is transformed from Ma into Meheya as in don't read the verse as Ma but as Meheya which then transforms the three Ma's into three hundred oh he drawing the light this light into his consciousness his conscious awareness drawing this light into his conscious awareness and understanding represented by the barrels, barrels of oil which represent understanding thus you were shown to know meaning that he draws the light of the infinite into his consciousness so that he knows of oneness that he cave off his elikim and recites the blessing who is good and does good over everything that happens as will be the case in the ultimate future when he, we returned after 12 months we saw that that beams were being sawed from its bones to rebuild those destroyed cities the opposite of holiness represented by the 12 tribes by way of whom the malchus is rectified is impurity. The people who leave the realm of holiness. Oi, the sages tell the sages tell us tell tell us. Say ye ye. So regarding the people who leave the realm of holiness, the sage tells us that he returned to delve into those who are after behind the twelve months of the year of the twelve tribes of holiness who are considered outside the realm of the Jewish people due to their behaviors. I saw that beams are being sawed from its bones. That is, their sins were engraved on their bones from one side to the other, as if they had been sawed from one side to the other. However, since the Jewish people, oh yeah, however, since the Jewish person is roused to repent due to the small insect in his nose, that is, by becoming aware, aware of some minor impurity that is distracting him, because if his repentance that even these evildoers will become a throne for holiness to rebuild those destroyed cities for they to support God's servants to rebuild the cities the Malchus this then is the meaning of I'm God your Lord you will know that both God Yikivovke and the Lord Elikim are I that is you will then fulfill the verse in God Yikivovke I praise his word and Lord Elikim I praise his word that is that everything is for the eye is good who took you out of the land of Egypt for as the Medrash comments all the exiles are referred to as the exile in Mitzrayim, in Mitzrayim, Egypt, since they all made sir oppressed the Jewish people, that is, the Malchus and Dominion, all of the non-Jewish nations are dissolved, since the Malchus of Holiness have been elevated from the midst, or from the midst 
from the house of slavery is an allusion to the cessation of the negative traits arising from the four elements which are referred to as slaves. Since all of the four elements are considered beneath the orbit of the moon, which is called a slave as stated in the Zoya, Behold the world, my servant. This refers to the moon. This means that the Malchus arises from the realm of evil by way of the Tzadik. And the negative traits cease to be by way of which a person attains the aspect of the world to come. An aspect of in God, I praise His word. In God, I praise His word. Lesson number five, the Rebbe is on words. Na na na, Muna Kumi Yuma. The trumpets and the sound of Shoy for Shoy for Raise a blast before. Na na na, Muna Kumi Yuma. Na na na, Muna Kumi Yuma. Na na na, Muna Kumi Yuma.